Hello, this video tutorial is about variation technique through geometrical inversions, as discussed in the Schillinger system of musical composition. In the first episode we look at the modification of an original melody using the inversion, retrograde and retrograde inversion variation forms. In later episodes you learn what these approaches mean for a harmonic continuity and for the combination of melody and harmony. Aspects covered in this video are the melodic shape, the modification of rhythmic patterns, smooth voice leading and orchestration. In the Schillinger system, variation may be obtained through a geometrical inversion. This comprises the set of four fundamental forms. Original, inversion, retrograde and retrograde inversion. In this episode, from a three-part series, we apply these to a diatonic melody example. And you'll see what this implies for the rhythm. Then there is a longer melodic continuity, created from a combination of forms. You may support this tutorial channel by either subscribing or by making a PayPal donation on my website. Let's delve in and start with the fundamentals and the Schillinger system context. His system of musical composition is published as a two volume set with 12 books on various music creation aspects. Quite a few subjects are already covered in my many tutorial videos and ebooks. Here the focus is on book 3, Variations of Music and more specifically on chapter 1, which is about geometrical inversions. There are the four inversion forms, which then may be combined into longer continuities. You'll find these four forms also in books on counterpoint and atonal music with pitch class sets. Schillinger frequently applies a generalization approach and therefore extends the four inversion forms to harmony and the combination with melody. The 23 pages long chapter is concise and I decided to turn it into this three episode tutorial series with fresh examples. As a starter to the Schillinger system you may want to watch this video which introduces some of his concepts and terminology. Throughout the series I will make frequent reference to this overview diagram to help you navigating the subject. The four variation forms will be introduced with a simple example. It is a six note motif with a binary synchronization rhythm. Watch this video tutorial which is an introduction to this category of Schillinger rhythms. Listen to the original form of the motif and notice the symmetry in the note attack duration pattern. Geometrical inversion transformations correspond to mirroring the original motif in either the time or the pitch domain. To find the inversion form we choose the pitch C as the mirror axis. Thus the pitch D, a major second above the C, becomes the pitch B flat. The F above C becomes the G below and so forth. Note that I use the labels O, I, R and RI. Whereas in the Schillinger book you'll find the labels A, B, C and D for these operations. I find that unnecessarily confusing. So here is the inversion form. The retrograde form similarly corresponds to a mirroring operation in the time domain, the time reversal of the motif. When mirroring in both domains we obtain the retrograde inversion form. Note that the order of operations is relevant. First we determine the inversion form, then apply the time domain reversal. Now that you saw the four fundamental inversion operations, let's look at a more realistic melody example. We'll create a diatonic melody, apply all geometrical inversion variations and improve the melodic phrase rhythmically. You may create a diatonic melody from any diatonic scale, here a modified C major scale, with a raised 4th degree pitch F sharp and lowered 7th degree B flat. It is called the acoustic scale or the mixolydian modal scale with a raised 4th. 
derive the inversion of this scale about the tonic degree C, as shown on the right. I uploaded a set of four tutorials on Schillinger diatonic pitch scales that you may want to watch. From this scale create a melodic form, with free rhythm, which becomes busier with shorter note durations near the end, a natural tendency. The melodic shape displays an overall ascending pattern. Notice the steps versus leaps, the apex and how I locally respect the ascending tendency of the F sharp and the descending B flat. Not all pitch classes are equally important. I already mentioned the tonic degree pitch C. Another characteristic is the primary axis, the maximum in the statistical distribution of melody note durations. Here you see the result, which has a maximum cumulative duration for pitch classes E and A, the tonic degree C coming second. Learn what the primary axis is and how it affects the perception of melody in this set of tutorials. We start with the first geometrical inversion operation, that is strict inversion. Inversion is an operation in the pitch domain and corresponds to mirroring the melody about the tonic degree axis C, applying chromatic interval steps. Thus pitch D becomes B flat, E in inversion becomes A flat, etc. Maintain the rhythm from the original form. We have obtained an overall descending melodic pattern. Musically, this corresponds to a different modal scale variant. In order to create the retrograde variation, we apply the mirroring operation in the time domain. It is the time reverse of the original melody, implying the rhythm played backward. This yields a change of characteristics. The overall melodic axis is now descending, with busier short durations near the beginning, more long notes towards the end, and peculiar, unmusical bouncing on beat rhythmic patterns. Let's modify and improve the rhythm by overlaying the rhythm from the original form. Now you'll get better rhythmical balance. For the general listener, it is harder to recognize the retrograde as a variation than the inversion. It is a more remote variant. As yet another alternative, overlay a new rhythm, maintaining most subscale level rhythmic pattern characteristics from the original. The fourth geometrical variation form is the retrograde inversion. In the strict procedure we first derive the inverted melody from the original, then apply the reverse in the time domain. Verify that the operation order is relevant. The result sounds even more remote and is hard to recognize for the listener. This is a fairly common operation in atonal counterpoint context, less so in the diatonic context. As before, we modify and improve the rhythm by overlaying the note durations from the original form. Now there is more similarity. We have the overall ascending melodic axis and busier rhythms near the end.
Finally, apply minor rhythmical improvements while keeping the useful characteristics at the sub-measure level and obtain yet another variation. As a next step you'll see extended longer melodies. Schillinger demonstrates the creation of a melodic continuity by combining the geometrical inversion variants. In the examples I will discuss the overall characteristics and create an instrumental form. For an introduction to Schillinger instrumental forms watch this tutorial on the channel. The first example combines three of the four variants in the order O, I, R, I. Each of the three melody variations, original inversion and retrograde inversion, is presented as a single instance. The total length, therefore, is 3 times 8 equals 24 measures. The example demonstrates there is no need to use all geometrical variations. Here the retrograde form R is omitted. Any order is allowed and thus there may be alternative permutations of these forms. Use the modified rhythm overlays on the melodic forms to obtain a more musically valuable result. Apply occasional octave transpositions of a full phrase or individual pitches to achieve an overall melodic curve. Here it is a juxtaposition of ascending descending lines. The melodic continuity is orchestrated with three different solo instruments, which is another variation dimension. Thus it has become an instrumental form. The second example is more extended, with six melody statements. Now all four geometrical inversion variations are used. Also implement the Schillinger theory of rhythm concept of coefficients of recurrence. Here 1, 2, 1, 2, to obtain a chain of single and multiple instances, multiple melodic form statements. The result is an extended longer example. The end of a melodic subphrase need not necessarily coincide with the bar line at the current time signature. This is reflected in the orchestration, see measures 8, 15 and 19. It is a consequence of the chosen rhythmic pattern overlay and the time signature, here 4-4, four, four, or by design. This is yet another degree of freedom to disguise the series of melodic forms and create a regular phrase length. We have obtained a unique long melody line based on an original theme or melodic form. Note the overlap 1 to 3 notes when there is a new instrument entering. Again use local octave transposition to control the overall melodic curve. These examples were created from a diatonic scale. The same technique can be used for symmetric or any type of pitch scale. In the diatonic case the idiom suggests that instruments are moving through various modal scale variants. 
In this video tutorial from a three episode series, we looked at the principles of geometrical variation in the Schillinger system of musical composition. You saw the three variation operations applied to an original diatonic melody. Inversion, retrograde and retrograde inversion. Pitch domain inversion is straightforward. In the case of time domain reversal, we may need to pay attention to the note attack duration patterns. Frequently use modification to obtain a more natural rhythm. Combination of the four variants with coefficients of recurrence yields a melodic continuity, a longer melody suitable for orchestration. Depending on the note duration pattern overlay and the time signature, melodic phrase lengths need not coincide with bar lines. Use octave transposition at any scale, total phrase, individual measures or notes to improve the overall melodic curve. Continue with episode 2, where you'll see the same approach applied to harmony and the combination of melody and harmony. You'll frequently find this kind of generalization in the Schillinger system. Support this education channel growth by liking the video and please subscribe to the channel. I do welcome support for tutorial production. The link in the description below points to the PayPal donation button on the website. There you'll also find more content and a collection of ebooks. Thanks for watching.